Okay. Don't know if I like this setup or not. We'll give it a a try. I am mulling paint, getting paint together. I have a whole bunch of old pigment discs, which I had used recycled water paper pans, watercolor pans, and pressed pigment into many, many years ago. And they all look like that, where it's just a pigment and then it has a color and I have no idea what's in it. I have a whole bunch of them, like 30 of them. And then I have a whole bunch of Bare Minerals Pure, that one's iron oxide. So one batch of paint is approximately two ounces. This is approximately two ounces. I'm grinding them together. I'm having a bit of a qualm because the mic is getting lost when it dries. And where did I put it? So I get all this stuff all set up and then I forget what I'm doing. Are you here? Yes, you are. No, you're not. Where are you? You're here. No, you're not. There you are. Okay. So examples. This is a vermilion disc, that's all it was labeled was vermilion, mixed with a carmine, the red dot is. And that's what I got. Don't have good light there. The brown is a rock pigment, I'll get into it in a minute. Now these two are, can you see the metallic sheen at all? I don't think you can. Anyway, they're micas. Can you see how light they are? So the mica by itself is incredibly light. It would make a nice wash, but it doesn't make a nice paint. But when I put it into the paint, it's completely lost. That's my math. Anyway, it's inauguration day. I am reminded of the day after Trump got elected and a friend of mine was really, really upset. And while I am the kind of person who always looks to the worst case scenario, I'm also the kind of person who can also find the best case. And I told that for person at the time, I was like, well, you know, Trump's done this, 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 and this positive in the last 10, 15 years. He'll grow into the role, mature, you know, that, that presidents get old overnight thing that happens. I need to get all the pigment out of here, which isn't going to happen without liquid, in all honesty. And it's making powders. I should have a mask on. Always wear a mask. Um, he'll grow into the roll. He didn't grow into the roll. Personally, I can't stand Biden. I can't stand Kamala Harris, personally. Um, people who think that this is going to be this wonderful left-wing ticket do not understand how right-wing those two are. It's going to be fun to watch. That's all I got to say. At least I don't have to worry about waking up at war with Iran. You know? Okay, so this is binder. Binder binds your pi your pigments to the paper. I gave up on cleaning it. This molar does not work for fine grinding, but it works great for mixing in standstill. This is the mica powder I'm going to put into this one. And they're eyeshadow powders. There are bare minerals eyeshadow powders. This particular one is mica, titanium, iron oxide, and carmine. And it's going to mute this orange a little bit, hopefully, because this orange is really, really orange. And give it just some opacity. And these containers will be used in the future. The big reason for keeping these containers once they're cleaned out. You, you really only need two ounces 
to make a decent sized batch of paint, okay, for personal use. This is all the pigment I got out of one water suspension on rock, ground rock. So, these are lava rocks from my, my garden, from my front thing, and there's two different colors. And I ground all of this one. Well, 90% ground, it still has a little bit of work to go. And from that, you get three stages. Don't quote me on the math. Anything that will float in water briefly is below 40 microns, is around 40 microns. Anything that will pass through a water filter, a paper filter, like a coffee filter, and still suspend in water for a day or so before falling out is 20 microns. For this level of powder, you want 20 microns or less, which is what this little jar is right here. That went through a coffee filter and then gravity out. That was three quart jars and three batches worth. This is what gets caught in the coffee filter, which means it's around 40 microns. Now, this is two grindings of the same batch of rock. Do you see the color difference? It's because the center of the rock had a darker color and the second grinding is a lot redder than the first grinding. Now, this is actually the fourth and fifth grinding. And the very first grinding got me a dark brown from that same incredibly light colored rock. I just spilled water everywhere because I couldn't have a video without doing something like that. Now could I? It is contained. The water spilt into the tray at the back of the commercial coloring palette, so I'll come back to it later. Anyway, all that to say I needed to let this set for a minute so that it would absorb some of the water because pigment repels water and doesn't like absorbing. And I don't have a desk mask that I'm willing to put on. So I let it set and talked. Anyway, my grandmother was a painter and she ran a art store for many, many years. And she was always setting us kids to tasks and grinding paint was one of them. She was an oil painter, so it was ground into linseed oil and not into, this is gum arabic, glycerin, honey, and some essential oil. And I really, really need to clear this off because this is going to not be what I want in a minute. And I'm going to wind up risking putting too much, way too much binder on my board. Okay, so that will get cleaned off further in a little while. I need some place to put it. Ha. Huh. Now. What I have for a molar is that, because you need a flat glass bottom. Hear the difference? There is too much liquid in this. And this is what you do for 45 minutes to an hour. I don't think you can see from there how gritty this is, but at some point it will quit being gritty and suddenly just be smooth. Why paints? Because it's something I can do. Scrape you back towards the center. Because this sitting and doing nothing is driving me nuts. These are all the paints I've made so far. Okay, and then these are how I'm going to sell them as drops and they fall forward. Of course they do, as drops. And they're on the back of old packaging. 
which I already had somebody message me about one of the rainbows that I showed. The paint doesn't stick that well. Let's see if I can find one that shows it. The paint doesn't stick that well. And it's like, well, it's on the back of an old photograph. It's photo paper. It's, it's slick. You know, the paint's not going to stick. It's not watercolor paper. And it was suggested I get some watercolor paper. And it's like, you think I don't own watercolor paper? My husband's an artist. I own watercolor paper, but I have boxes and boxes of other people's photos that wound up in our storage in the last few years that I don't know anybody in these photos. None of the people who we got the photos from are still alive to ask. I, I'm punching them and making them into hang tags. Now I'm keeping one or two good quality photos of anybody who might be identifiable. Okay, now the funny thing is there's not too much water in this. So that extra amount of water I put in, I didn't have enough in yet. Anyway, the idea is to make two half pans, one for the hubby. This is the optimum. This is what you're going for. There's nothing underneath it. I made two pans each. One pan for the hubby, one pan for me. And then anything else, half pans, anything else becomes a drop to sell. And the goal is to get to the point where I'm selling palettes of colors. Like all the colors on this card are landscape rock. And all the colors on this palette are neons. Um, the first palette I want to sell or set up for sale is goth palettes. I want, I'm going to be making lamp black. I have a list. There it is. Oh. Charcoal, lamp black, cork black, composite cork black, eggshell, which is an off-white, and vetigris, which is copper green. All on one palette. And then on the found stuff, front yard rocks, we have light red, dark red, and gray, and in the backyard we have gray and tan clays. So that gets me started. You know, it's a huge process. You can't just go out and grab a rock. You take the rock and you grind the rock. Well, you take the rock and you put it between some paper and you smash on it with a hammer to break it into small pieces. You try to pick out as much of the paper as possible, because there will be paper. And then you grind the rock in your mortar and pestle until it won't grind anymore. With a little bit of water in there, because rock makes dust. And volcanic rock makes volcanic dust. Then, when you think it won't grind any further, and it will, but when, you, when you're ready, you get a quart jar and you toss it all into a quart jar with some water. You shake it up. You count to about 10 and you pour it into the next jar, leaving the crunchies at the bottom of the first jar. Then you leave the jar to sit for a minute or so and you pour it into the second jar. And the second jar you pour in through a coffee filter. So you've already taken stuff off the first jar Okay, from the mortar and pestle into the first jar. Mortar and pestle sits back down. This jar, slur it around, let it set for a minute, pour it off through a coffee filter. Okay, so now you've got the filtered water, which is going to make that incredibly fine ground powder, and then you've got the coarser stuff, which is what I just showed you. Then this crunchy stuff you put back into the mortar and pestle and you grind some more. And you keep doing that. And between one pour off and the next, I had a complete change in color because something a lot more red obviously ground up at some point. And you keep doing that, and it sounds fast, but it's actually hours of, of crunch, 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 crunch of this right here. Okay, because this is going to take about an hour. I can see my crunchy spots. I don't think you can. I can't see what you can see in that screen. Oh. 
at some point it just suddenly becomes. This is halfway there. I should have a much bigger surface for the size of this molar. Anyway. I didn't sleep last night, for obvious reasons probably. I think a lot of people didn't sleep last night. And then I had to stay out here because the husband was waiting for work boots to come in the mail. And they came in at three o'clock. And I've got a headache, and, and, and. Now, am I happy with this shade of orange? I think I am. It's not that bright orange it was to begin with. It, it really toned down. I could add a bit more red to it or a bit more yellow to it if I wanted to, but I think I'm okay with this. It's starting to flow like paint. I thought I got two empty containers to put it into. Yeah, I'm still a little wet. It is pretty much smooth though. So being too wet, the choice is let it dehydrate a little bit, let it dry out, and then scrape the dried edges in or add a little bit more powder of some form. And I think what I'll do is I'll play with the color a little bit so you can see. Let me see if I can get to this. So this particular one is mica, iron oxide, and titanium oxide. And it's a real mauve color, and I'm not a fan of mauve. So, that color's not showing true on the camera, by the way. It's a mauve brown. That's not a true color. You're not seeing the color. Grr. Anyway, I'm going to dump I actually have a measuring spoon. I'm going to dump about that much more in which will dry up the paint just a little bit and it should shift the color just a little bit. That is my hope. Okay, go in. Go in. There we go. Okay. The mica powders absorb a lot more liquid than they look like they're going to. Can you see the change in color? See, the record button is right over the center of where I'm working on that camera image. It makes it very hard to see what I'm doing.
you can definitely, looking at this, I can see two different colors now. So now I need to mull it a little bit. Mulling is basically grinding because you're using the glass bottom against the, the granite in this case, or a glass surface that's slightly etched. And you're mulling what's between the glass and the plate. This particular glass does not work that great as a muller because it suctions too easy and you don't want it to suction quite that easy because that means it pushes things away. Yeah, I like that color better. So now I go get two more pans because I know I got two pans and set them here for me to work with and they're nowhere to be found. I'll be right back as I knock something over. My swatch card. You can test paint from the wet. I don't think you get a true look at what the color is going to turn out like. So on this deep vermilion, this is the original powder block, which is not, I don't know if you can see it, it comes off. This is the paint I made wet, and this is the paint I made dried. So the wet paint is not a true rendition. But you can test just by grabbing a brush, getting a little spot wet. We all know how to paint, right? And coming over onto your swatch board and That mauve brought in a brown note that I'm not objecting to. And that's what I got. Which is still wet, so it's pooling a little bit, but we'll leave that to dry. Everything wants to fall over. Okay, I have two pans. One of the things most of the artists do is they fill and they refill and they fill their pans again, putting the paint in the refrigerator for a day or two in the middle because the pans shrink away from the edges and what was full becomes half full. And since I'm just doing the pans for the hubby and I, I'm not bothering with that. Plus the the focus to put it in the refrigerator and remember it exists isn't in my life right now, you know? I'm having a hard enough time remembering other things exist. I will use the paint on the bottom of that glass, painting little wahoozits and whatnot. And the hubby's been painting little wahoozits and whatnot. That's got a nice color to it. Let's hope it holds that color as it dries. So, we've got one pan full, and we set it, and we get one pan full. Can you see how thin this is still? I'm going to have to let it sit before I do my paint drops, or else it will make very, very flat paint drops. I just got orange all over myself from the muddler thing. So I'm reasonably certain this won't make an active drop at this point, that it's too thin. Yeah, see, it just rolled down. See? So that's what I'm doing. That's me in paints. It's a really pretty color. It's not that bright orange it started out as. I like it. I can't see the clock. I've been talking, you know? Anyway. Tune in next time. Let me know if you want to know more about paints. You know, 
talk to you later. Bye-bye.